This is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you, it's all about attitude. Welcome in. We are live here on this Wednesday, getting you set for a big show today as we've got more Falcons news to get to as well. Why is it so easy to get a job in this industry? We'll talk about all that and more. Appreciate you guys starting your Wednesday with us here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Of course, give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATL. And of course, you can always follow me at Mark Zinno, M-A-R-K-Z-I-N-N-O. And I want to start today with uh, what I started with yesterday and pick up where it left off because I think that it it bears some of the things that I've said before are starting to come out through other sources and, and it sort of validates what I was saying. But moreover, you know, I, I think it's, it, it's big for what we're going to talk about. And it goes back to the Atlanta Hawks. And we talked yesterday about Chris Kirshner's mailbag uh, and some of the things he responded to. Uh, and he had, that was part one. And, and yesterday he had part two. Uh, and there were some more questions in there. And, and Chris Kirshner is going to join us here, I think, tomorrow on the show. So uh, we'll get his reaction to this. But in part two of the mailbag, they addressed two major things. And these are things that I've already spoke about when it comes to the Atlanta Hawks and this offseason. One, Nate McMillan. Two, Trey Young's attitude. Let's start with Nate McMillan and a lot of the mailbag questions that came in. And again, I, I give all the credit to Chris because, you know, he wrote this stuff up, but I just like to kind of expound a little bit more on it. Remember when the Hawks got in trouble against the Miami Heat and we saw that they weren't able to make adjustments and that they weren't able to, you know, ever figure out a way to get through Miami's defense. And uh, I had asked at the time, remember, you know, I said, as soon as they went down two games to none, I said, I don't like where this is going. Uh, the Hawks don't seem to have an answer. Uh, Nate McMillan is not really figuring any of this out. There's nothing, no, no adjustments being made, no sense of a, a way to get through all this. And so I asked the question and I said I was going to wait until the season was over to try and figure out an answer. But the question simply was, is Nate McMillan the right guy? And once the season had ended, I thought it was fair to start trying to figure out if Nate McMillan was for this team, right? And so I don't think that anybody is wrong for asking that question. And several people asked that to Chris Kirshner in his mailbag, you know, that Tony Ressler gave a public vote of confidence to Nate McMillan. Um, but there were anonymous sources behind the scenes pointing his finger at him, uh, pointing the finger at Nate McMillan for, you know, what he did in the playoffs. and. To me, it's one of those things that I get and I understand an owner publicly, you know, has to back his coach. Because if you don't publicly back your coach, guess what? You know, automatically you're 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 gonna lose confidence in him. The players are gonna lose confidence in him, and, and everybody's a dead man walking. So you have to publicly back the guy, but it is completely fair to ask questions about his ability if he is the right person to elevate this team and to make this team better. And I don't think there's anything wrong with asking those questions publicly. And I certainly don't think there's anything wrong with demanding answers for that. But two things seem to go hand in hand. And one of them is, is he making anybody on this team better? And if he's not making people on this team better, then how are they supposed to get better? If if Nate McMillan doesn't have this strict idea that defense is going to win them more games than lose and that it's going to elevate them and it's going to make them a team that is more competitive in the playoffs, then where else are they going to get it from? Because when I look around currently at the NBA playoffs, you know what I see? State Warriors is a top five defense. I see the Miami I-6 is a top five defense. Like I look around and the Milwaukee Bucks right now, even though statistically this year, They weren't a top five defense. They have been the best defense this postseason. So I look around a lot and I see a lot of defense being played. 
and that leading to deeper runs in the playoffs. But yet I don't see the head coach of this team doing anything to make defense a bigger part of an 82-game schedule during the regular season. And that's problematic for me. And, and I think that that's a real issue that this team and this franchise has to deal with. And it's really something that if they don't address immediately, then why are you keeping the guy around? Again, I'm not necessarily advocating for him to get fired, but he is partly responsible for the future direction of this team. And if he as the head coach doesn't address it, then nothing is going to change. Nothing. You know, it's interesting how Nate McMillan got here, because that's going to lead me to the next point. Nate McMillan got here because Lloyd Pierce got fired. Why did Lloyd Pierce get fired? Well, if I recall, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, Lloyd Pierce got fired because he had a strained relationship with his young star. And they didn't really get along well because Lloyd wanted one thing and his star wanted another. And in reality, Trey Young, for all of his accolades and for how good he is and for how much fun he is to watch and the, 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 the trajectory that he's on as a star in this league, uh, for all of those things, he is a pathetically bad defender. And while Trey isn't at James Harden's level at his peak where, you know, he was averaging nearly a triple-double and uh, he was leading his team to the playoffs and deep playoff runs and 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 things of that nature, um, you know, Trey can't be that bad on the defensive end. And if no one is going to sit there and be the adult in the room to Trey and tell him, dude, you need to play defense. And if you don't play defense, we're not going to win games. You can score as much as you want, but guess what? We will be one and done in the playoffs every year, and you will eventually be shipped off somewhere else and go be a secondary player to some other star where you're going to go win on a team. Like, if that's what you want, Trey, fine. But if you want to be the lead dog pulling a sled here, you've got to play defense. And the only way that this team will start to play more defense is if Trey starts to play more defense because that's what people will follow. If Trey is the leader of this team, what he does – Everybody else will do. If Trey's got his thumb up his butt on defense, then guess what? Everybody else is going to do the same because what Trey does, everyone else is going to follow. He's the leader. And if the head coach is not going to sit there and force Trey Young to be more defensive and focus on it and get better at it, then nobody else is going to follow suit. And that's where we are. Maybe Lloyd Pierce wanted Trey to play a little bit more defense. Maybe Lloyd Pierce got a little bit in Trey's ear about playing defense and getting better on that end of the court and not worrying about so much about scoring and shooting threes from the logo. And maybe that's why Trey had a strained relationship with Lloyd Pierce, which ultimately led to his dismissal. And now he's got a coach that he loves who never bothers him, doesn't force him to play defense. And guess what? Sure, Trey's happy. Sure, you've won games, but you're not going to win a title. Period. Who's the adult in the room? What's the point of having the coach if he's not going to tell the star what to do? And I get it. Oh, you all say, no, no, coaches, it's the NBA. Nobody tells the stars what to do. Right. Nobody tells the stars what to do. And I get that. But the good stars in this league don't need to be told what to do. LeBron doesn't need to be told to play defense. He just does it. Kevin Durant doesn't need to be told to play defense. He just does it. Right. And and we've seen Trey play better in defense. He just doesn't do it consistently. Whose job is it to make sure he does do it consistently? The head coach. You see where we are here? You see this the, the vicious cycle that we're in with the head coach and Trey? So bottom line here, very simply, and we're gonna to talk to Chris Kirshner again probably tomorrow. Um, is that if we don't get better defense from Trey Young and we don't get better defense overall, this team will not get any better, period. So is Nate McMillan the guy? I don't know. I really don't know. They're going to run it back with him one more year, and you're going to see very clearly. Once into this season, this is still one of the worst defenses in the league next year. You got your answer. You got your answer. You know what you are. But there needs to be a long sit-down talk by Tony Ressler to his head coach and to his star because that's the easiest way to address this thing.
hey, Trey, guess what? If you start playing defense, everybody else will start playing defense. It's that simple, bro. It's that simple. All right, coming up next, uh, more on the Falcons. They get set for rookie minicamp. We made a bold prediction yesterday. We'll try to do another one coming up next. It's A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you search Locked On Sports Atlanta. More to come right after this.